Today I'm going to take us into Matthew 7, 24 through 27. This could be a familiar passage for some of you. I remember it well growing up in the church, and yet if you didn't grow up in the church, it's still an interesting passage. It might be helpful to you. Entitled our devotional today, Follow God's Plan, and um, we have to look at one verse in James that kind of, that's very appropriate for our topic. James is the one who says, Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. There was a number of years ago that a church uh, purchased a large, huge, vacant warehouse, and their goal was to convert it into their a functional church building. The pastor was talking about it, and he shared how amazing it was to watch the builders work in this big, open, raw space. He said that when they first started, you'd look all around, and there were little tables all set up all around in, in the vast area, and, and each table had a set of blueprints on it. He would watch the workers, and as they would go, get busy in the one area, they would go and back to the table and check the blueprints, and they'd go back to their work, and they'd check the blueprints again and go back to their work. They did this again and again and again. And when you consider that process, it, it shouldn't be any different for us as we build our own families and our own homes and our own lives. You see, the Almighty God has given us His plan, His blueprint, and it is His Word. So we should focus constantly on God's Word throughout the day. Go back to the Word, whether it's in our mind or actually in the written Scripture. That's the truth of Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. Follow along as I read it. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a, a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it didn't fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house in the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So, interestingly enough, if you take a close look at this passage, there are some interesting things that it will teach you. First of all, I want you to see that there are two kinds of houses. There's the house that's built in the sand, and that house was easy to finish. It didn't require a lot of effort or work. You just slapped together, together the house and maybe put a, a deck on it in the backyard. And when you're finished, you could grab a glass of iced tea, lean back on the deck, and watch the crazy guy next door who's still digging his foundation. Building in the house in the sand was a very easy thing to do. Ne neither the price that was paid for it or the quality of the job, neither were very high. A lot different from the house that was built on the rock. The house built on the rock took a lot of work. There were weeks of digging and drilling and pouring before anything was visible. The guy was exerting a lot of effort, but you can almost imagine the neighbor who's sitting on his deck hollering out, Hey, lighten up, dude. Why, why are you so focused on the foundation? You can't live on a foundation. Come on, get busy on the house. Get the house up. There's two kinds of houses, too, if you look in the passage. But there's also two kinds of builders. <clears throat> the builder who built on the sand, Jesus calls foolish. In fact, the word here in the Greek literally means blockhead. A foolish person was someone who failed to weigh matters in order to choose what was best. Uh, the foolish man didn't discern. discern. He, he chose the sand. He took the safe, easy, and popular route, and he paid the price for it. But on the other hand, we have the wise builder who knew that the foundation was the key to a good home. He knew that faster wasn't better. He, he knew that no temporary pleasure could compensate for the pain of having his house come crashing down on his head. So there's two kinds of houses and two kinds of builders, but they both had one experience. If we look back at the verses in Matthew chapter 7, and the same thing came to each home. I don't know if you've noticed it there. It says, that the rains fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew. They faced a storm. And without exception, every family, every individual, we, we will encounter storms in life. Could be a financial crisis. Could be health issues. It could be a pandemic. It could be the death of a child. It could be the death of a loved one. Those are just a few of the many storms we face in life. I don't, I don't know what heartache you are or may be facing, but a storm is coming. Jesus even reminded us that in Matthew and in John, excuse me, when he was speaking, he said, um, you need to know that in this world you will have trouble or tribulation. 
Take heart, I've overcome the world, he says. I wish it wasn't true that storms were coming. I wish I had the power to protect you from it. But storms do come to every home, to every life, to every family. I don't want you to forget that we have these two homes and two builders, one experience, but there's two outcomes. The house built on the sand, what happened? Well, it experienced total collapse. You can almost imagine the regret, the shame, the pain, the devastation would have come upon the one that built that. But the house that was built on the rock, it endured, which brings relief and security and joy and you could even say victory. So let's get serious for a minute and ask a key question. Who are the sandy builders in this passage? Sure, they're the foolish people. But if you look closer at Matthew 7, verse 26, you'll notice that the foolish people are described as those who heard his word and did not do them. Like James says, they were hearers of the word, but he reminds us to be doers also. We need to dispense the notion that the people building on the sand are relaxing in bed rather than worshiping God in church on Sunday mornings. That's not true. You see, these are people, according to Jesus, that are hearing the word and they're hearing the truth regularly, but they're doing nothing about it. I hope that doesn't describe you. Don't wait for the storms of life to force you to your knees. Allow the word of God <clears throat> to change your course of action. Let it, let it happen right now. And in humility, acknowledge that you need to start doing what you're hearing. Now look again at verse 24. And let's consider what it means to build on the rock. Jesus says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. It's not about hearing the word. According to this, Jesus, Jesus is telling them, it's about doing the word. It's of key importance for us to make a plan and commit ourselves to it. You could say this, I'm convicted about this in my life and I need to see it change. I'm going to ask God, he, he's a friend, of course, according to scripture, I'm going to ask him to help me. So don't go to, my challenge to you is don't go to church and let the worship and the word stir up your heart week after week, but do nothing about it to leave no different than you enter. You know, Psalm 95 reminds us today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. So let's finish by saying this. My challenge to you as your pastor and friend is follow God's plan. Do what the word says. Don't be a blockhead. Don't be foolish. Be wise. You can trust God and you can trust his word because it is the absolute truth. Pray with me. Father, we would never choose to be called foolish, and yet there are times where we're aware of what your word has to say. We've heard it preached. We've heard it in music and songs. We know it's relevant, but sometimes we just don't do what it says, and that's what Jesus is calling the people here as he preached on the, that mountainside that day to um, be like the wise man and not like the foolish man. So, Lord, I pray that this devotional will fall on listening ears and open hearts and that you'll allow us as, as individuals to, first of all, have placed our faith and trust in you as our Savior, but secondly, to follow and obey your word, to follow your plan. So we don't want to be a blockhead or foolish. We want to be wise, God. Help us with that in Jesus' name. Amen.